Hi guys, it's Wayne from Wayne Goodman Photography. So the other day I went to a show with a friend, it was a photography show and there were loads of companies there such as Sony, Olympus, Panasonic, various different companies showing off their brands and their products and uh, I was able to test a, a few different lenses uh, which I've wanted to give a go for a while. Uh, one of those lenses was the 35mm Carl Zeiss lens which is a Sony OEM lens and it's an f1.4 and what I really liked about it was it had uh, the aperture ring on, on the lens whereas my Sigma f1.4 which is the art lens doesn't have that so I really I'm used to sort of uh, Leica cameras and things like that so having the aperture ring on the lens is a really nice thing to be able to just to quickly adjust the, the aperture rather than use the scroll wheel on the camera body and I was really looking forward to giving that a go um, and I also obviously wanted to see the difference in image quality because the Sigma I think it retails for around about £700, something like that, and the Sony is about double that, so I was really hoping for sort of double the image quality, although I didn't see how anything could provide that because the Sigma is a fantastic lens. So I just wanted to show you a couple of pictures that I took, uh, took at, the, at the event. Um, there were people behind me, I did feel a bit pressured to let them have a go with the lens, so this is, it wasn't a great test environment. but. It just these couple of pictures hopefully give some idea, you know, from the off of uh, you know the difference in quality between the two. And here we go. We'll jump into Lightroom now. Okay, so I've jumped into Lightroom and we have some comparison images now with the two 35s. On the left hand side, we have the 35 mil from Sigma, the art lens, which is mine, my own. And on the right hand side we have the Sony lens which was a test sample from the stand here at the show. And uh, for both of these images I tried to keep the similar distance, uh, it wasn't ideal, just free, handing, free standing, um, so there was no tripods involved here. Um, but I did manage to focus both times on this little Zeiss logo on that particular lens of this camera. Um, and the angle here we can see is different, but for most part the image is the same. Um, I'm sure it's good enough for testing. So I'll just zoom in here. These are now both at f1.4. The left hand side images are ISO 200 and the right hand side images are ISO 160. Um, so it does possibly show maybe a slight exposure difference between the two lenses, um, but at this point not greatly so. And for the most part I generally set my ISO to manual, um, so I just choose my ISO, um, but in this case I was using auto ISO so the camera chose for me. So we'll zoom in here and I did manage to definitely focus uh, using the small focus area of the camera, uh, the a7R2 on the Zeiss logo, and for me I was quite surprised by this image. Um, the right hand side lens, the Sony lens, to me doesn't perform anywhere near as sharply at f1.4 as the um, as the Sigma lens here. So I don't know. I hope it comes through across YouTube because obviously we have the the compression going on. But again, these are both at f1.4. I've focused on exactly the same point. It's not hard to you know focus on something like that because it stood out so much. So without a doubt, you know I've got the right uh, the right focus point here and to me the sharpness like I say is hugely different um, not just a small amount but you know to me quite a large amount um, you can see there the 70 is definite in focus so is that but it's so much sharper um, you know but and the E mount here is definitely in focus but again um, it's sharper here although it's still not perfect obviously because we're already out of the focus area there um, it's still, you know, a sharp, you can read it better than you can here. So uh, I was quite surprised by this, that's why I've created the video, although the testing circumstances weren't ideal by any means. Um, but remember the Sigma is around about half the price of the Sony. Um, it should be the other way around, going off the, the values of these lenses. Now we do have some chromatic aberration creeping in. Um, there's, on the Sigma lens we've got greens going on here and we've got quite a lot of purple going on there. We've got greens again on the Sony and not as much purple going on here. 
So the Sony does seem to cope a little bit better with the CA. Um, and also in the left top left corner, if we go up there, uh, I'll just bring it down there. So you can see we've got quite a big vignette, uh, quite a big dark to white gradient going on. Um, that's you know that's definitely visible. Uh, here we've got a nice white uh, area, so there's no vignette going on, nothing like that. Um, so that Sony lens does seem to cope very well with vignetting and with chromatic aberration, um, but sharpness compared to the Sigma does seem to suffer without a doubt. But you don't always want a super sharp lens, so you know for some people that's going to be absolutely fine and let's face it it's still an amazing performance it's just when it's next to this one suddenly I'm thinking I, you know for me personally I definitely bought the right lens um, we'll head back into here and I'll do now two f8 images and we'll compare those so now we have f8 and f8 and again the camera chose the uh, chose the ISO level and we've no I noticed here we've got ISO 6400 versus ISO 5000 so there does seem to be an exposure difference between the two lenses um, we'll zoom in again and now we see that the sharpness levels are very very similar um, there is that slightly brighter that image on the left from the Sigma compared to the Sony um, but everything is very sharp. Yes, we've got noise going on, but of course we're going to have it at 6400. Um, maybe if you're viewing this in 2030, you'll think, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. But as it stands right now, that's a pretty good performance for the A7R2. Um, we've got very similar performance in this area now. Uh, slightly different colours going on. Remember, this was set to auto white balance, but we've got sort of a more bluish cast to the Sony. Uh, which is quite common in my experience with any Zeiss lens, quite a cooler colour to it, colour cast, um, versus a war slight, ever so slightly warmer, just a few hundred Kelvin difference, um, a slightly warmer cast to the Sigma lens. Um, so another difference there that I'm noticing. Um, background blur, even at f8, we're going to get some because I was so close to the subject. And if we zoom in on this lady here, um, so perhaps ever so slightly softer on the Sony um, but not too much difference at all um, I think there's, the lines are more visible on the Sony versus here on the Sigma but we also have the slight exposure difference um, so maybe that's something to do with that but overall very similar rendering um, but we have got differences as we've seen in the CA in the uh, vignetting and in the sharpness so I'll, uh, you know, I hope that sort of gives you some idea and uh, I'll give you my final thoughts on the lens now. So I know at this point you're either thinking that's a really good comparison or how can you compare those two lenses in that environment, you one or the other. Um, it's a shame I had to compare them in that environment because I really would like to get them out there but I honestly don't think I'd find different results. Um, the 235s are very 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 good lenses but what we've got to take into account in my opinion is money. Um, you know. We, we all want to have as many lenses as possible in most cases so we've always got something for that scenario and if that means if the Sigma means I can buy that and another lens for probably you know the same price as the the, the one Sony 35 millimeter then that to me is firstly a big thing to think about secondly uh, I really do prefer the performance of the Sigma uh, which I wasn't expecting um, at the end of the day the Sigma this particular Sigma is a Canon mount. This is what I'm filming with at the moment. Um, it's a Canon mount lens on a Metabones adapter on a Sony body, um, and it outperformed a native Sony lens in terms of image sharpness in the center, in my opinion. So uh, for that reason alone, I would be just looking at the Sigma. Then you've got to look at the price. Like I say, it's half the price. Um, it's not 10% different, it's not 20%, it's 50% or so different. That's a big difference. Whether you're looking at secondhand or new, it's generally around about 50% here in the UK. Might be different in your part of the world, but um, you know, for that reason, that's a big thing. Um, 
The lens itself, the Sigma, uh, in terms of build quality to me, felt very similar to the Sony. Uh, the only thing I wish my Sigma had was the aperture ring because I do really love having an aperture ring to just adjust very quickly uh, rather than not knowing where I am with the, uh, you know, because you, you basically hold the camera and you, you move that wheel and that that's not the same as just when you've got the camera and you just adjust the aperture i know i'm doing weird things here um, but basically you do get much more idea of where you're at with the aperture uh, ring of a lens and i always think that's a really cool thing to have um, and something i really like to use as i've said so um, i'm using the sigma now though the only thing i would say to you is if you're doing video I've had to put this lens in manual focus on about f8 to hopefully keep me in focus and I don't know if I'll be in focus until I've watched the video through. Um, so uh, it doesn't auto focus during video which is actually the reason why I'm going to be buying a specific lens for these videos um, because unfortunately uh, I think every lens I have now for this camera is not a Sony lens um, it's all adapted so uh, I just prefer that way I, I, I like the choice of lenses and um, that's my prerogative but just something to take account, into account if you are doing video that it won't auto focus uh, during the video but it will auto focus absolutely fine during stills mode i've not really had any issues and i've found it incredibly fast and even my friend the other day who's only really used sony lenses used it and he actually was shocked at the the speed it's, it's basically the same uh, on the metaphones so there's no difference so i hope this helps you to some you know come to some kind of summary and conclusion as to whether you're going to go for the sigma or the sony or something else um you know perhaps uh, one or the other is not right for you i'm not sure but the sigma is a fantastic lens um, i do have hopefully more sigma reviews coming up they're a company that i've had many lenses from in the past and we've now spoken we are hoping to be able to i'm hoping to be able to review some of their lenses and believe me the bias on the sigma in this video is not because of that okay um, i've been using this sigma art lens which i bought with my own money and i've been using it for weeks and i think it's fantastic the the way it renders the sharpness the quality it's absolutely brilliant and um, it's a great lens and i wouldn't be saying anything different if sigma had paid me for this sigma aren't paying me and they won't be paying me for any future reviews either i'm sure so um, this is all my my honest opinion as are all my videos and I really think this, the Sigma is worth a look. So thanks for watching. Keep watching because I'm going to put some uh, photos um, from the Sigma that I've done over the past few weeks or so. And, you know, you'll get an idea of how the quality looks when it's all edited. And uh, thanks for commenting. Thanks for thumbs up in my videos. Keep doing that. And I'll see you again soon.